Attention humans, this is a Thunk Tank. Please insert this podcast directly into your nearest orifice for viewing pleasure. Have your condoms ready. Okay, you ready? Oh shit. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the Thunk Tank. (laughs) Welcome to the Thunk Tank. (gasps) Oh yeah. Yeah, Yeah, there you go. Welcome, come into our, come into our Thunk Tank. Luke, don't switch to the other peanuts. <laughs> Welcome to the thunk tank. Come in the tank. We're thinking and we're drinking and we're thunked and we're thunked. Oh my god, I'm probably more beer than man if we go far enough back at this point. Three, oh, two, two. Oh wait. <laughs> Welcome to the thunk tank oh, podcast. God. It's happening. This is Welcome, uh, mother thunkers. This is uh, Ooh, that'd be Luke. I'm in a room with Joe. We're Skyping in with Johnny. Because it's the 21st century. Uh, the interwebs aren't behaving very well right now. We're having Skype. some some interweb interference. I wonder if that has to do with it's the day after Christmas. Maybe everyone's home, like, streaming Netflix, and, and it's just bogging down the system. Yeah, porn and returns, dude. That's the day for this. Today is actually Boxing Day. Is the day after, the week day after first week oh, yeah. day after what Christmas? What does that have so. to do with the internet? Slowing Happy down? Boxing Day! Is it's actually a holiday? huge uh, like Black Friday type sale day in Europe and stuff. So, oh. um, I maybe they're using up all the internets. Um, I obviously reached the limit of my technical ability here. There is a yeah. limit to the internets, though, right? I believe there's a limit. That's why like things do slow down at peak hours, right? Yeah, right. And they they don't only even so tell you that in the fine capacity, print, I yeah. think. Right. Because, um, e- you know, no, it, no it is the internet is a physical place. It's wires <clears throat> that meet up in bigger places, and then obviously it becomes wireless at, at certain points, too. But it's still but stuff. you have a limit of how much data can go through the tubes, so to speak. Right. Even though the tubes are fiber optic cables. Right. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> but I digest. Um, um, it's the day after Christmas. I just checked uh, isitchristmas.com. And it said no. That's an actual place. Yeah, Johnny said yeah, that website. This is why the websites are slowing down because people. Are I know. I was thinking like, like, what a funny use of website space. Like, <laughs> is it Christmas dot com? And it it just prints if you. It's a real website. If you type that in, and it prints a big yes, one day out of the year, and then mm-hmm. all the other days it just prints a no. Yeah. And it, it, that's it. Works. Yeah. It's a very simple website. It's never been wrong as far as I know. That's like... Uh, Have you ever been to the fucking weather. I was just going to say the fucking weather.com. No. Yeah. That's the best. It, that's it, you just put in, your, you put in your zip code and it'll be like, it's fucking raining out or it's fucking cold out. I see. Or it'll, be, it'll, be like, it'll, it'll, it'll give the you the report. temperature and say like 60 degrees, cloudy. It's fucking okay. Yeah. Something like that. That's funny. Yeah. It's a, it's a good vibe. Um, sure. So it's a day after Christmas. We didn't really have a plan for any kind of podcast, but it came together. Yeah. So uh, buckle up. We're gonna buckle up. We're gonna just uh, do whatever here. Maybe yeah. do some segments. Maybe just talk about Christmas. We could talk about the spirit of Christmas because it is in the air. So uh, I don't know. That's what are we drinking? Say. Let's start there. Yeah, as let's we start always there. Do. We have some options today. Fueling up with some craft beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna get real slippery real yeah, quick. Yeah. I just realized I, I fucking, oh, I'm already on the edge. I forgot. Gla- I forgot glasses for the beer. Well, we can chug our waters and then. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, we've got water in, in our beer glasses. So if we like want to start idea. beer, we have to chug water. Should, it's actually well, not a bad. System. I could I could at least mention <laughs> what beers we have because we do have a, yeah, yeah. an, an array. So of Joe, beers. read us the beers. So the first one that we have is a Greenport uh, Harbor Ale. So that's a, a local brewery by us. Uh, pr- re- really nice beer. They do a good job, nice variety. Um, we have a Rogue Dead Guy. I think that's, I don't know if that's an IPA, but it's an ale, I believe. Um, then we have one that I'm very excited for. It's by, um, I think, Kentucky Ale is the brewery, and it's a bourbon barrel stout. Um, I don't know if I sent you the, those links, Johnny, but that's a really interesting brewery because they do probably, I, I was checking out, out their website the other day, and I think they have at least five or six different um, bourbon barrel beers of mm. different different varieties. And I actually, mm. I tried a couple of them and put the ratings on untapped uh, yesterday for Christmas. So if you want to check those out, um, they're, yeah. they're very different, but um, they get the job done. 
very well in some different they're ways. They're getting real weird in the beer world with barrels right now. Uh, yeah. Like I mean, traditionally, out there. you take used whiskey or, or wine barrels uh, that, you know, they they're not worth using again or for whatever reason they're done with it yeah. and then you put throw beer in it to give it some flavor but now they're starting to do the reverse with it and they're taking old beer barrels and they're putting whiskey in them and wine and then so oh. they'll take a beer barrel right age beer Weird. in it as the first thing in it so it's fresh oak it's the oak is the flavor you're getting not you know whiskey or bourbon or whatever oak and works. then they'll put bourbon in it and then after fine. the bourbon's done <laughs> they'll go put wine in it or they'll put beer back in it so it's like a weird uh, multi generational barrel thing, but I like it. I was gonna I, say I think I saw a porn that was similar. To that. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Let's not go there. Anyways, so Johnny, what are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking from a microbrewery in North Carolina called Hoots Hoots Roller Bar. Really tiny, uh, tiny little brewery in the, uh, like practically no distribution in the middle of the state. But I'm drinking their ESB, the extra special bitter. Nice. Which, despite its name, nice. is an English easy drinking sessionable ale that's not really that bitter. It's just extra special in its bitterness. Um, that's a distinction. <laughs> yeah, well, everyone thinks they hear ESB, they don't know what it is. And if they ask and they hear You're it's saying extra it's the quality bitter. of the bitter that's special, not the degree of it? Like, well, sure. Like, it's not like twice as bitter. Yeah, it's not, it's not just more bitter than. Yeah, because they have. There's also best. Sorry, bitters. are you saying bitter or better? <laughs> bitter. There's best bitters. There's uh, extra special <laughs> better bitters. bitters. So there's a there's best wild. bitter. Be- How much best? better bitter would a better bitter buck? <laughs> if a better bitter, uh, better, to be better, a better, better bitter, 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 you gotta <laughs> bit the bitter. Of Just bitter? a bit in bed. So I know uh, for any of you like craft beer listeners, you're like, man, these guys started out with like treehouse beer and, <laughs> and, and yeah. you know trillium and right. all this shit. You know, Delta we Bar. we get as as good as as what we can get. It's expensive and and travel. It takes a lot of traveling yeah. to get like that there's, beer there's all the time. There's a time component involved too. But yeah, you have to go out. Tune and actually in get as it. we uh, move into January because I'll be making a beer trip up the East Coast, which and stopping yeah. at lots of good places like probably a lot of good fueling. Aslan, along the way. Um, Creature Comfort in Georgia, maybe like um, uh, Tired Hands in Philadelphia. All that kind of stuff. I yeah. can get you Aslan or Creature Comforts anytime you visit here. Sounds good. In my in my undisclosed southern location. He is in an oh. undisclosed southern Each location. Each episode you accidentally like narrow in the search zone. That's yeah. something you would have to do. I'm trying not to. <laughs> like That's we why. used to just say Carolina. Yeah, Carolina. Like one of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, the actually, region. Uh, I can either confirm or deny that. It's a Carolina. Did you say you can either or either confirm? You confirmed it earlier when you were talking about the beer you got, though. (laughs) No, it's from there. doesn't mean I'm there. Oh. I feel like he said he was. You're doxing me right now. That's what you're trying to do. You're doxing me hard. Uh, Oh, we also have a Brooklyn Brown Ale, too. Yeah, just a little. Kind of round it out. Dessert at the end. So, so... That, that's something we should try to avoid as we become, as we claim to be beer guys. Is you don't want to be too snobby about it. Like yeah, Trillium and Treehouse and Tired Hands. These places are all great, but there's there's some little hole in the walls that make really good beer. That like Hoots is ESB is a really good beer. Yeah, we also oh, have no, Miller, we also have Miller High Life in I, the fridge. I wasn't. Uh, I was just telling telling Joe down in the kitchen like when we opened the fridge there was like a few Guinnesses yeah. and a Miller High Life and I yeah, was like we're ready baby I was like let's pop one of those too like yeah. like I got nothing against that you know you gotta like you can't forget that you were 19 once like drinking a 12 of Natty Ice in the park or don't forget well, those or days. more you, you could forget those days Miller Light's not a bad beer though Johnny why come on we spent so many nights in the park with a 12 of uh, uh nat- Natty Ice yeah, I just that's uh, if you haven't experienced Natty Ice, don't. I'm not <laughs> recommending it. But if you have right. to, enjoy it. It's a pretty yeah. gross version of Natty Light, natural light beer. Yeah, uh, it's a step up, which somehow. is also yeah. like piss water kind yeah, of. But but the the non light version of those are always more tenable. Yeah. In terms of getting. If I'm at a bar mustard. though, like let's say I, I'm I at a bar that has a lot of good beer on tap, like 20 taps. Yeah. And they have random cans, you know. If you get like a Natty Ice or a Bud Light or something when there's all those kinds of beers, it it does weird me out a little bit. I'm not like actually judging you or anything, but it weirds me out. No, what weirds me out is I'll be at like a a nice restaurant or a nice bar sometimes and people will just order a Bud Light 
for five six dollars and why would you it's just it feels out of place yeah you when know it's like mean? seven dollars for like a high really Alley, beer, cigar yeah. city high Alley on yeah. tap yeah well, and let me let me throw that back at you because you guys know a little bit about beer if you're at a wine <laughs> if you're at a wine bar and are you are you going to go by oh wow that's you know a really what? good wine I'm not, for that I'm not i would probably price. be on my phone like looking up something about wine and i do that with beer i mean I, I i know about as much about wine as i do beer I, I like mean, I, I have more, more taste beer. experience with beer, Yeah. but I got into, like, a geeky wine phase where I was, like, reading about it a lot and watching documentaries. And Don't you get deliveries um, of wine or something? I watched, like, a, a lecture series on it on thegreatcoursesplus.com. Oh, yeah. Um, great, and then my subscription uh, ran out, so Here I don't we are. really <laughs> use it anymore, and I've been getting dumber ever since. It's over. <laughs> I love the great courses. I'll actually order their DVD sometime, so yeah. that way you don't you don't have to uh, like make sure to use it right away before your month right, subscription right, right. runs out. It's cheaper now. I think it it maybe even comes with Hulu attached to it, like some mm. promo. Oh damn! Um, I was gonna just use a different email address and do another free trial. I heard a tip. Have you heard this one, Johnny? Where if you're doing like free trials for things, so like they make you give a credit card, but it says it won't charge you for like. A month, right? Yeah. That if you if you have ever gotten like a Visa gift card, yeah. you use that, and it it's happy with that. It like it. it oh, it still it's a counts real credit as a card, card on it's an file. Active it card. it um, is a real credit card, That's right? Why. But yeah. it it could even be empty, right? And um, oh, because when it's they do card, go to yeah. charge you because you forgot to cancel Spotify before. You just get to go, hey. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you get an email saying, hey, we wanted some money from you. Do you still want to give it to us? And you're like, oh, I definitely didn't. Thanks. Thanks yeah, yeah. For Your card was declined. Good to fact, know it's out I of money. I planned ahead for this. <laughs> yeah, that's As if idea. you would reply to yeah, Spotify. Right. Like, the whole point is you don't have to. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You didn't I, give I, a real address. One, two, three, yeah. go fuck yourself lame. Well, like, like, it's like the other day. I went with Joe to the gym. I signed in as Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I told Actually, Luke. Actually, no, I didn't write Mickey Mouse. I What'd wrote Mr. Mouse. Yeah, no, I know. Because I told Luke, I said, you're allowed to to come to the gym as my guest my only my only stipulation is on the guest pad you have to sign in in as either mickey mouse or mr mouse obviously you choose mr well that's just well, being classy I, well and she was looking and at adult. me and i was just like if i write mickey mouse <laughs> i'm giving her the middle finger if i write mr mouse you're scratching thinking, your head with, with your middle name. with your middle finger sticking up you <laughs> i've know, seen like weirder subtly. last names than mouse yeah like mouse house well no i mean there's probably somebody named Mouse House. My favorite character from the cartoon BoJack Horseman is um, uh, the albino rhino gyno. It's a white, like, Does, albino rhinoceros. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a gynecologist. That's a real guy? And, and you, they always say that tongue twister. The albino rhino gyno. <laughs> Wasn't he abducted? Joe, can you pour us some beer? You gotta Please? chug your water. I'm, 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 ready. I'm almost halfway through mine. I know Joe's been question, slow on the beer. The He's... question, the question is, what would you like to start with? Um, I would like to start with the conductor. I'll shuffle like, them if you want. I would like to start <laughs> like behind your what? back. Yeah. I, I think I want to start with the Kentucky because that uh, is probably the most yeah. distinctly flavorful out of these as, as a bourbon stout. And in fact, I think brewed with oh, brewed with coffee and aged in barrels um, with more coffee. Oh, we forgot to do some housekeeping. If you're still with us now, that means you you like us enough to not turn us off right away. Yeah. Thanks oh, we for listening. Yeah. I don't I don't like that phrase housekeeping though. I think we need some thunkish branding going on. Well, we do. Um, we have thunk corrections. We have thunk corrections. Yeah. We have uh. Anyway, attractions. <laughs> we should come up with uh with our own thing because uh, you know I have a house and I I don't keep it very well so. <laughs> Well, but you uh, keep it enough so that there's not like shit everywhere. Like you go, uh, you poop in the bathroom, right? I mean, that's a start. That's that's a form of housekeeping. I mean, if there's a drain in the floor, you can, uh, yeah, it's fair it's game. It's all pipes. It's that room. <laughs> different <laughs> pipes go to different places. It's all holes. Having having drains is uh, half the battle, I guess. If you have drains, you can work with that. So, Here. not okay. Right. It's not housekeeping. Well, we'll say something better next time. But uh, we're. Um, well, I have a thunk. Well, I have a thunk correction that was brought to my attention. We have a thunk correction, yeah. which is like a, a correction from the previous time. If, some, if somebody emails us the correction, uh, they, also, know, they know who they are. You can tweet at us the correction. You could tweet at us. You could post in comments. You could email. I'm okay to have it uh, public so, domain if you want to do that. Listening that's fine. back, I realize I uh, need beer. 
very often I do need beer. I realize something's off so far, and it's that we didn't start with a beer. We haven't drank yet. I know. That's a problem. Um, so officially, welcome to the the tank. <laughs> we, we should probably start the episode here. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you realize going back through? That I say monkey, monkey, human. Yeah. Uh, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, a lot. <laughs> it's become a fr- uh, almost a catchphrase, not quite. Yeah. But um, I don't know the right term for it, but... What I'm referring to with that is, like generally well it's it's in regards so the thunk correction is in regards when we say something like humans uh descended from monkeys or something like that or a bunch of monkeys banged and then eventually right we created humans that sounds like what i maybe exactly said <laughs> that sounds that's like maybe what comes yeah. up <laughs> yeah it's almost a direct quote verbatim uh when in fact uh monkeys are a subset of right like a larger um i i don't know the the name of the great so you Asian, have but, uh, subset of, course, of great apes let's or say whatever, okay so anyways we know that there, there are like um you know monkeys are a different category than the great apes of like chimpanzees orangutans and all so um of course that when we say we evolved from monkeys it's it's uh an incorrect way to say that you know the like chimpanzees are 90 what eight 90 eight, a lot percent something yeah. Yeah. Percent identical. The which... aliens came down and <laughs> spoke to the monkeys and then gave them electricity brains, and now we got people. <laughs> That's one version. Yeah. I remember people seeing a, a picture going around um, the internet a few years back, and I showed it to everyone at your wedding, Johnny. I remember going around the dance floor, like showing this picture of an alien banging a monkey from behind and then the monkey little by little like got taller and became a human (laughs) (laughs) now that's evolution at work uh but the point is uh we have a common ancestor with all these types of uh yeah monkey things and it's not that ape things ape-like beings evolved from monkeys right the monkeys we see around and the the apes that we see around um they are uh at the same point in history as us, and if we were to trace that tree back past yeah. different divisions, eventually we would merge. Yeah. I think something like three million years yeah. back is when we split off with where the chimpanzee line went. Right, and I think to your point, the idea behind when we do associate people with monkeys, it's it's not more so from the scientific aspect as the kind of you know monkeys well, being silly, throwing the point poop, is, being crazy monkeys. Well, so like the monkey vibe, like I'm using it more also as like. Ooh, ooh, ah, you know, mm-hmm. like, so there's yeah, how that, people like, behave, yeah. Because, like, monkeys go, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, but chimpanzees also go, like, <laughs> well, people you're, can do that, you're trying too. To, you're trying to talk about shared traits, like, human. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and so, like, human the psychology tendency. of a chimpanzee is, like, similar to, to our psychology. Of course, there's Seems differences, so line, yeah. but, but the farther back and the more baseline you go. Yeah. And so I talk about that, like, lizard brain sometimes, monkey brain. Lizard it's, brain comes up, too. It's and just it's, an evolution thing. Yeah. And, um. We, it's easier it's, to say monkey than I do say few, chimpanzee sometimes too, or whatever specific type of great ape we're actually. But that's a good distinction because there's a lot it of is. people that would be all like haughty and arrogant about. Well, did you like, know that people descend? No, I mean like believing in evolution. Yeah. But then no. when you ask them about it, they might not actually know like the the details. Well, because that's actually and they wrong might have to conceptions that, yeah. all all right. wrong. Right. They might believe in more of that like, well, there's like a this natural like progression and growth to it. And instead, they're not seeing it on the time scale that it is and how, like, natural selection is localized in time and space. It's right. what works right here and right now. And it has no, like, trajectory. Well, it's as like, soon as the thing that was, like, yeah. becoming an opposable It doesn't thumb, have a great plan. Maybe that causes, yeah. like, some problem where they just, like, yeah. stick their thumb up their ass all day and then it kills them or something. <laughs> then the thumbs would stop growing, you know? Because that's they didn't not, bang that's not because how they died. Works. <laughs> this is why I say. Can I teach should... a class now? <laughs> sure. <laughs> going Nobody's going to show up, but none of us are qualified for. Uh, and there's way better podcasts. No, I mean, 
if you want to learn about evolution. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, that's I think we 100% should, I, yeah. true. Although, if you already know about it, but you just want to tickle your evolution party or knowledge, like this is the podcast to listen so, to. We, so we're going to tickle not, you. Yeah, we're, we're going to find gonna that, teach that you. ticklish middle ground. If you learn something along the way, it's an accident. You might learn something, or you might. So, we inspire you to want to learn something. Yeah, that's yeah, what we yeah. do. You're here to Let's tickle people's that. intellectual prostates. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's that's not what I thought. I, I love when for, Johnny but... just says like the is that what you're saying angle, but just like he it's gives it like twenty times whatever I said, and then adds like prostate to it also. <laughs> he really he really gets it. You're yeah. breaking the fourth wall here. At least. <laughs> Everyone's gonna know my formula now. I only got like three of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the complexity that is Johnny is really running on three base formulas. <laughs> oh yeah. Be well, a genie. Well, Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. I, I think that covers okay, the monkey sorry. business, right? Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I, I think that's fair because I think it is again it is important to distinguish that that is what we're referring yeah. to when we. I say think monkeys, we yeah. we've talked about it but with each other point. so often. Like yeah, it's the just kind idea of, of like how we think about you know it, yeah. like the other thing. The reason is um, I I just use the word monkey to mean both things. Like, I, I don't distinguish yeah. it in my everyday speech. Well, I think it's one of those words I like to say, too, monkey. But I do yeah. have this realization, like, so often. I remember the first time I was on monkey. a subway in San Francisco, and most the of the time. subways there are, like, above the ground for a big part of the journey. Yeah. So it is, it's nice. You just get to sit on the subway and just, like, subway. see That's true. Um, it's more of an city. above way. It's just a way. Well, it goes You're in and out. not sub anything. A lot of it's underground, too. Mm. Oh, okay. So, it's kind of um, I, I, I was, whatever podcast I was listening to, I was in like a trippy mood and I look outside and there's a dad carrying his son on his shoulders, you know, that pose like, like a monkey. And I, all of a sudden, like yeah. my brain just saw it as like a monkey in a concrete jungle. Yeah. And like, I just saw like everybody and how they interact and like, you know, you're at the train station and there's somebody weird walking behind you. You're like an animal who's just like smelling for like the the feeling, and your 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 idea of danger is coming from like such a instinct level. Yeah, there's a you're lot not of, even working I, out I, the logic. You just yeah. feel if you feel creeped out. Yeah, there's I a get, lot of I get what you're saying, Luke. There. You know, I don't agree. It's not the same for me, but I get it. You're you're saying it's a racial thing for you. That's the way <laughs> oh you like God. to use that. <laughs> uh, that's the formula. <laughs> So Bam, that's gotcha. what I that's what I really mean when I say like monkey, mm-hmm. and we've used that like in our group of friends so often that yeah. I probably um, it's worth clarifying. Like, no, but I think I say it too. I think we all just like bring up monkeys from time to time. I like saying human to people too. Like you, who human. nobody could be insulted who you say like hello human, human. That's like weird. a monkey. I would be I would be weirded out if you said that. To well, me. you I should mean, be weirded out, you... but like it, you wouldn't be offended. You're not going to be like I'm not a human. Like fuck uh, you. It might be a little condescending if they're an alien. It depends. Like, what if you're standing there and they're going the opposite direction on the escalator <laughs> than you, and as they're going up, you go down, they turn to you and they go, "Hello, human." You'd be like, "What?" Like, but that's he all. Just stares that, at you I didn't as he goes say it like that. But that's no. all in the inflection because you can do that with any. You can say, "Oh, ho- hello, human," or "Hello, human." Right. Hello, human. Yeah. It's like it's the it's, same. It's like referring to someone as as a Jew or Jewish. It's all about how a, the hard J or not, right? Oh Whether yeah, that's it's, true. It's yeah. or not. So yeah. it's the day after Christmas. Joe's a little hungover. <laughs> ah, um, it was a long Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. What is Christmas like? I, I my family isn't really religious. I don't think yours is, right? Not they, like especially. They, they they had Christmas. But I know. So like, what is Christmas? It was mostly in that dinner. Sense? Uh, we call ourselves dietary Catholics. Because we do um, all the traditional Italian food stuff, so with Christmas. none of the religion. But yeah, yeah you do like the tree and presents. Yeah, and... we do the tree and presents and uh, uh, Christmas Eve fish feast, which is like an Italian yeah, traditional yeah, yeah. type thing. It's and... the it's the feast of I think feast of seven fishes. It has to do yeah. with the number seven fish in Jesus. Uh, that's pretty much all I remember. Well, I think we, it... there was religion when we were kids involved. Oh yeah, but we've all gotten over that. But um, well, there was, but not like yeah. in an intense way. You know? I mean, we went to like church and like I you know, took whatever. religion classes. Yeah, we I did went too. to church. Yeah. I would always sure. go to midnight mass. And the funny thing is, like, my career now is like I have you to go to church, church yeah. like, you know, like, I don't know, 10, 12, whatever times a year to play trumpet at services. Yeah. And so that's probably more than um, some religious. I people. get to really like experience like the vibe of a holiday from like the kind of people who go to church. Yeah. 
And one of the things I noticed, you know, you play a few services on a Christmas Eve and then some on a Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. People just have like a, a better vibe. Let's say people that you would kind of, you could tell like they might be assholes like during other days or maybe like earlier that day. Yeah. There's almost like sense. a sense for Christmas, and I don't get the same thing at Easter. There's something special about like the Christmas, New Year's, December kind of vibe. Do you feel like it's because this is the one time of the year that you probably shouldn't be an asshole in church, like for Christmas? I think that's part of it. I think at a deeper level, people are that. just like stopping and appreciating. Like I, re- I just like stand there for a lot well, of the services. Well, if you're not going to appreciate it, then people. when are you going to appreciate exactly. it? Exactly. Right? It's yeah. one of those like. Let me just take a moment to like, right? I like you already knew what was important, and you're just gonna recognize it. Yeah. But not even like out loud necessarily. It's like so. I saw like a dad like, he had like, you know, really beautiful wife, like a, two kids, and like the third one he was like holding or something, and he had like this genuine happy look, like, ah, oh, like what a life. I'm king of the monkeys. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know if it was that. No, but, like, isn't that, like, part of the evolution? No, I'm saying it looked like... like he was very present moment and happy. And then I looked yeah. around, and a lot of people were like that. And then, like, you know, they come up to you, and they're just like, thank you so much for blessing our service with your music. It was beautiful. Like, really genuinely, you know? And you're like, I'll take checker cash. And I'm just like, Merry Christmas. So, like, <laughs> That's my cool. pleasure, you know? Yeah. Like, but... Yeah. I mean, I, but you're part of that reason, experience for them, in, and I, I really real do it, dude. Yeah. Like, so I play yeah, along with like hymns cool. and things like that, right? Yeah. So it's like the end of the church service. They had like all turned the lights off, lit candles, which is like very tribal and like yeah, that's really feels cool. good. Yeah, I, and I really then like we that. sing, the lights come back on, and it's like hark the herald angel, you know. Yeah. And like when I come in and play, I really like cheese yeah. it up, you know. Yeah. I just like put the icing right on Hell top yeah, of the man. cake and yeah. just like. You know, and like I, you know, I. It's like I'm making fun of it in a in a slight way, but also it's good. Like it's good cheese, you know. Yeah, you're making memories, man. And well, so I kind of like rode the vibe of like the good vibes of the church people, you know, and and played good music because of that. Yeah, that's cool. It was like there, there's like an energy to Christmas or something. I don't know. And, and it's different than the other holidays. It's different yeah. than Easter, yeah. you know. Even though Easter is more religiously important, probably right. I mean, well, anybody can be born. Only a few people can have come back to exactly. life. I think it's Jesus and like yeah, and... she was a virgin. Sure, like <laughs> that's what they all say. <laughs> well, uh, Christmas has two purposes traditionally. For, for white people, let's say, be honest, because it's a European thing. So. All right, go on. <laughs> uh, one is has to do with the time of year, and the other is uh, actual philosophical. I, I actually get Jesus. I get the whole Christmas thing. I just don't buy it, but I, I get it why people go go with that. Because you know the whole the whole point of the Jesus thing is it's okay to be a person, like to fuck up, make mistakes. Like he gets it as long as you're trying. Like it's okay, and that's real reassuring. As for long as you come back to the Lord in right. Christianity so, or well, that's whatever. Christmas, that's a big Christmas, Christmas is, yeah. is yeah. it's supposed to be like the darkest time of the year because it usually is around the winter solstice. Literally, yeah. That's why it's that chances are the baby wasn't born in a major a manger in the winter time because the, they probably all would have died and froze to death. <laughs> But, well, they uh, did. That's what a, a nativity set is. They're all frozen there. Yeah, it doesn't make sense why. <laughs> frozen that's in time. why. That's frozen the... in time and death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really deep. You didn't get it, Johnny? Yeah. He Come probably on, Johnny. was a summer baby. Uh, yeah, like July, right? So right. when we celebrate half Christmas, that's why we have like half Christmas drinking parties, because that's when Jesus was really born. I mean, when you say we, you mean just like us? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't mean we uh, as like any more than like five people <laughs> or, or like the actual whole, Christians. the whole point yeah. of christmas though is to have something to look forward to and then something to look back on in the at the midpoint of the shitty time of year i think, I that's think the that i think you it, just yeah. nailed it yeah. when you said totally. that I, I connected that feeling i was talking about yeah. earlier yeah. like there's a feeling of like you simultaneously it's like a bridge reflect on the past and yeah. and, and feel gratefulness yeah. you know that's the look on that guy's face i was seeing but at you... the same time you look forward and you see like I have enough strength to get through this dark month or two, and then spring is coming, and with it, literally new life. Hark the herald angels, baby. Flowers that, come up through the snow in the springtime, right? And that's that's why it even before Jesus, there's a bunch of pagan holiday pagan holidays that uh, that do the same basic thing. 
that were around that time. Saturnalia, Bacchanalia. Saturnalia yeah. is my favorite. Which um, is why the the date is it was decided on for fair. making yeah. Christmas. Because for people living in the northern hemisphere, that's a tough time of year. You know, if you live in Australia, you might have developed a different. And it's probably like time, tough at that time. Like you're just getting less sunlight, so like your brain's making less like happy juice. Yeah. Um, and you're also getting less vitamin D, probably, seasonal, right? The, 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 what is it? Seasonal, yeah. whatever. Sad. I've heard about that. Yeah. People who just get like depressed. In, I just like, need to take more vitamin light places. Yeah, vitamin D in the winter. Cocaine they works get tired. too. Cocaine. Um, Cocaine's a hell of a drug. But that could so. explain Donuts. like there, there was probably like harsher mood swings and like like and then like a war vibe out. changes yeah. when the when the seasons changed at that time, right? right. Yeah. That's why. Like, it, and it really meant half the people might die, right? Yeah. Because yeah. when you got sick in the winter, it's like well. Now everyone else is sick. Thanks a lot. And well, you just like you get a fever, and it's like either the fever breaks, or, or you, you break. Yeah, it, <laughs> some something's dying yeah. here. It's either you or the fever, and probably the fever. It must have been so hard, man. You think back to like far enough back where like you have eight kids, and like five of them die by the time they get to seven. Yeah, few, very few of them make it to. Uh, it's not even the child mortality rate. Like people who die in childbirth or the first few weeks or month or whatever. It's the fact that. Even after that, so many of them don't make it to adulthood to reproduce. But, yeah, but it was normal. It was normal. Yeah, I know, normal. I know. So that's that's why, why people have less kids treated, now. Kid, well, also, kids are treated differently. That's why you didn't really pay attention to them. Yep. Uh, yeah. For the first few years, because yeah. like, why would you get too attached? They're just gonna. That's for old people to do, because the old people are gonna die so, soon too, anyway. So you know, that's why old people and love o- kids, often like, old people like make their focus on like they become very concerned with like who's in the family that is is not married yet like how do we get mm. them married how yeah. do we encourage them to have kids yeah and sometimes they're they're very just like in some cultures like so straight up about it it's like yeah. you know got, when, are you, a... when are you when are you gonna uh g- give a, our family a baby you know yeah what, what t- she's like oh we didn't chicken. haven't even really talked about that like we're not sure yeah. it's like you should do it now yeah. If you don't do it now, then you can't Bubonic have a plague. third one by the 440 or something. <laughs> right, it's like, yeah, what? you just got to start churning them out and hope a couple take. But it's like that's that's sort of something that older people like might look forward to so much that they don't even realize they just like influence that that kind of. But this is this like, is the something... guilt to get married by age 30 yeah. or something. Yeah, right? but uh, that's and, in a lot and, of and all of this, especially with like child mortality rates, like. I, I mean, this is stuff that doesn't... You go back not that many generations, and this is still a very real concern. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is only within the past, It's you know, like we are in 2017, so. but we're not, like, so, so far from, like, really... A really different way of life, you know? Yeah, like, and, and in different ways. All right, so let's go back 100 years. But, 1917. When you look back... Oh, I think we lost them. When you look back at history, and you wonder how could these people be so brutal about that shit these things it's you look at that though if you're raised in a in a world where like you're not yeah. recognized as a person I think until people you're like were a more savage back then people are a little more brutal like the, the the pilgrims their whole thing was like the puritan mindset was uh, children should be what was it seen but not heard like you were just expected to stand there that sounds like an arrested away. development and, school <laughs> and then turn on and become a person Right, because might, there's no point until you've proven that you can survive to adulthood. Right, you're not a resource yet, really. That's what you're just not paid any mind. But um... well, it, I think it it raised it, and and this goes even to like the 1950s. Like if you've ever watched the show Mad Men, it's sort of portraying like a version of like a cultural version of a man had to be like this, you know, mm. and like they had to present this sort of cold, emotionless strength, you know. Mm. Someone like a Don Draper just found a really convincing, like, pretty genuine way of doing that. But if you, um, this is not much of a spoiler, but um, fast forward 30 seconds. Yeah. You know, spoiler. Don Draper is is a name he stole from somebody in the army. He, who he, who Don, he murdered? The real Don Draper, um, his name was like Whit, um, something Whitman. Um he, you know, he was supposed to stay in Korea for another, like, two years or something. That rat bastard. But when the a bomb went off near them or something and they were get, getting uh, rescued, the guy who died, he said was him. <laughs> he switched dog tags, basically, is what oh, I'm saying. Oh, yeah. So, those, um, those were the days. You Wait, know, what does this have to do with Christmas? 
<laughs> well, I'm just, we're, we're, we're just holes. tracing back, like, there, there's a sort of, like, way that, like, like at a holiday like this, and I just thought Christmas was unique than any other I've seen, there's a sense of, like, like you, I think you nailed it, Johnny. People just settle down for a second, and they sort of come back in touch with, like, the most crucial thing that makes the project of life happen. Which is our next beer, ladies all, and like, gentlemen. Makes us all, cooperate. What? It's our next beer. The, what makes life... Oh, yeah. All that crap well, you just honestly, said. like, one of the reasons we love beer is because I think um, it's like anything. Like, it can it can go totally wrong if used the wrong way. But if used the right way, it can That's good. it can really, like... Enlighten. Enlighten you. In, in, in a, it, it, it tips the balance of your brain to sort of, like, you know... It, it changes what vibe you're... What frequency you're vibrating on, basically. Yeah. And this is the Which distinction with good beers, up. too, right? Well, good beer kind of helps me even more get, like intellectually excited at the same time you know it's of course it's about getting buzzed right oh that's but it's also about part. like you know tickling all the parts of your brain that you can but isn't it funny that you say that because is that what's happening with the sense of church and how that ties into community and family and all that yeah, where and you're getting a bu- it, you're getting a buzz honest. from that though right i got a buzz like sense. for myself when everybody was just like Oh, young man, thank you so much. You know, like yeah. you get a little buzz of like goodness. You but, know, and it's also, but it's also those other factors, like you say, where, you know, you look at beer for example, and so there's the buzz, but there's also the flavor and the taste, and that's you know everything else we celebrate with Christmas. Like I was saying, my family, how we do the food holidays and stuff, and sense of community. Like we come and we talk about beers, we discuss beers, have a good time. Right. You're doing the same thing, so the the there's a tradition and in that. And society sense. gives you off work so that you can do yeah. it with space. You're yeah, not like a, cramming it's it. It's a sense into of something. tradition and community in just. Uh, Thanksgiving feels ways. a little crammed, you know. Crammed in what sense? In, in that, like, you work Wednesday and then it's Thursday and then like you're oh, already. I don't work like, Wednesdays. I'm good. I don't know. There's just I think Johnny nailed it with like the in between seasons thing. Yeah. But there's there's a sort of like neutral zone feeling. It's like the eye of a hurricane. Yeah. The whole rest of the year is like a hurricane spinning yeah. around and it's crazy and stressful. And something about, like, let's say it starts even on Christmas Eve, because you usually don't have to work Christmas Eve. Then you have, and a lot of fun things happen if you like your family. If you don't, then, like, this, the equation Ideally, changes. Yeah. A lot of fun things happen on Christmas Day. And then you usually, potentially, depending on your job, have off, like, all the days after that. And then a week later is New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, which are another two really fun things. I think yeah. a lot of people get super depressed after New Year's Day, right? But there's something like a neutral zone. It's like the eye of a hurricane in between Christmas and New Year's. And that energy just makes people settle in and, like, just be happy, kind of. Yeah, and it also makes a lot of money, too. I think, like, a quarter of, yeah, it's, a it's quarter of like, money spent on is um, it December, right? products, it's between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Or is it? Yeah, oh, no. is that your fact or fiction? No, I oh. just, I thought it would oh, be funny. Oh, I was, I was so proud of you. I was like, oh, <laughs> it would have been good if it was. Just but, it in, good. But, but, that, but that actually is a true. That, 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 I think it's, like, a quarter of... Like whatever you would call that non-discretionary bullshit spending yeah. on crap. Non necessities, whatever. Non necessities, yeah. <laughs> well, I think we should celebrate Saturnalia, which is the pagan winter solstice festival, and it was like a six-day feast that led up to the solstice, and it was partying, like just hedonistic partying. Yeah, but parties and, back then would probably be crazy. Yeah, because you and, knew uh, you were gonna die of whatever. Yeah. Roll, yeah, well, the other big thing was role reversal stuff. So, like, you pick the, the you know, the shit sweeper and give him, give him a crown, and he'd run around, like, ordering the household around. And, but he'd be ordering them to, like, rage and stuff. What you know, you it was like, a, that's the holiday. They would, like, you know, if you were, like, a master of a household, you would just, you would go hang out and drink with the lowlies, and someone would go sit in your chair and, and order people around and be the master of the house, like, you know. That sounds dangerous. In a festive way. It yeah, does. It I mean, that's what I was to trying check. to say. I don't think parties back then were like, like you know, well, hanging out was... around the fire with some wine or something. Yeah. Like, I was probably pretty, pretty pagan and no, pretty No, I just mean like I, would, I wouldn't want like the house sweeper to be like get a taste of power and be like, you know, I'm going to slit all their throats, I think. Right. Like that seems like a, a, a good move Wait. on my part. But he doesn't have to because he lives in a household with where with the master's like cool with it and lets him party with him. You see what uh, I mean? Are you, yeah. just, are you justifying slavery, Johnny? 
No, I'm just justifying their the the point of the fest, the practice so of the festival. So it's like possible that that uh, rel- the religious version it's of Christmas was shake built up. on something like from farther back, and then now yeah. well, in I 2017, think this, over, this all overlaps. Yeah, people like us. I don't. I didn't go to church except for you know my job playing there. Yeah, but. Um, Let's say even for most of the people, I think most of the people that went to church, mm-hmm. they aren't like identifying with the specifics of the religion, and I would say they're mostly enjoying the same thing we're enjoying. Well, how many people? Do I was th- enjoying it without the religion. Yeah. You know, how many adults would you say were at the church where you played uh, yesterday? Well, um, it was filled up. So I played in two different places. One yeah. was a small church from seventeen twenty eight. Yeah. Um, and that was Episcopal, and um, it's very small, and it was filled up for both ones. Yeah. And then I went it's to a big, a bigger one um, <laughs> on Christmas Day, and that was very packed too. But, I mean, but how many people, of people seem to just come and enjoy the vibe? But that's my point. It's how like many, a blessing on how, the day. But how many them. of them would you? How many of them would you guess have actually read the Bible from start? That's to what finish? I'm saying. I don't think a lot. I think a lot of them are enjoying it, it in the yeah. same way we were, right. right? Which is, I mean, that's fine though. Like, and maybe, maybe like. They That's haven't cool. thought about it deeply. Maybe they have. I don't know. But I, I, there's a moment in a in a Christian mass. I don't know if you guys Probably, remember this, yeah. where you go around and say, "Peace be with you." Peace be with you, and also with and you. And it's really fun to watch. Yeah. Not on on a regular sure. Sunday. Me, the force be you with see you. sort of. <laughs> yeah, it is a sort of that. Yeah, it kind of is rift like right and off in, of Christianity. And in, in yeah. Buddhism, they have like loving kindness meditation where you say like, "May you be safe. May you be free from danger. May you be truly happy and because free." Because why not? And um, the idea is like if on Christmas I saw people more genuinely wishing that to people. It's like, yeah. hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. Peace yeah. be with you. Yeah. You know, it's like I mean this, it. Like, hey, like, can you help me time. change my car battery? No, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't no, really. Listen, mean if that. there's anything I can do ever, it's like actually I need yeah. a ride to the city. It's like, ooh, ooh, I'm kind of busy though. You called like, me out on my that? day off. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was just well, saying it. I also don't care actually. It's the day that we we say like it's okay to just be a person. You can be a fuck up or successful. Yeah, like, just be. It doesn't. Just it's be. just okay. Like the existentially. Merry it's, Christmas. It's day just day be. Merry not Merry freak Christmas. Out. Just be. A, yeah, you should just, never be offended if somebody says Merry Christmas to you. I if you don't celebrate Christmas, then it doesn't I, matter. I wouldn't be offended if, if somebody do, said Happy Hanukkah to me. I'd very be like, nice. Yeah, I'd I be should, like, I'd say you people, too. I should have people a ha- happy offended. Hanukkah. I'd say thanks, you too. Yeah, I I don't celebrate it, but I hope that whatever day Hanukkah is, I'm wishing something to somebody and it's like on christmas and i'm in a church merry christmas right yeah. if i'm wishing it generally like it like the whole idea of saying happy holidays there's there's like just a feeling of like hey it's december life's pretty crazy we're in the eye of the hurricane so yeah. like well, good I, luck when the the next side of the I, storm passes i mean i actually i i say happy to, holidays i say to people happy holidays i don't say merry christmas unless they say it to me but it's not like any like politically correct motivated thing it's just it's all the same bullshit just with different words as far as i'm concerned yeah but i think people mean it more around christmas and new year's that's what i meant right no yeah there's a genuine like delivery because people are like johnny said they're in that in between thing where they can just be they can be a fuck up and it's like nobody's judging it's christmas did you you see the the movement on (laughs) online i don't know if i sent you this article about how this uh i I don't know if it was like an organization or somebody was trying to start like a petition or something to change uh father christmas to person christmas because you can't assume his gender identity yeah that's and the wrong fight there are women in the middle d- east that like also the um, planet's melting get put in so. jail because they got raped that's the did, right did fight, you guys right? the wrong fight is like that well it's a mis- it's, a mis- al- it's a misallocation of energy it's a misallocation of energy that's yeah. for sure yeah what johnny did you guys hear what happened with canada they, the government made an official announcement that Santa's is moving to the South Pole because of climate change. The ice sheet is melting, so he's moving his awesome. factory and everything. Awesome. Why would he go to the South Pole? It's because when the ice frozen. melts, there's land there. It's, oh. also, it's also more frozen. Like the the North Pole or the North um, the uh, is he moving the, the whole factory or the, the Arctic yeah, will his like elves, his whole operation. But the Arctic here. thaws so in the, the summer. The so is Antarctic that place open thaw. for rent right now? Uh, theoretically. Santa's yeah. old place. <laughs> but, but I think they also said, like, the reindeer is going to get too warm for them. They need a cooler habitat. Who are they saying this to, though? Like, they're telling teachers to tell their students? Like, what? No, no, like, the whatever, uh, I don't it's know, whatever spreading government around. agency is in charge of Santa. 
Johnny, uh, when are you getting the Russian stuff? mastodons on the case? Oh yeah, we, what, do you, what do you mean? They're coming. It's happening. <laughs> uh, we went over the, the the Russian mastodons, didn't we? I think that, that was, in a, coming that was out. in a beta that never. The movie's coming out. What movie? We should save that for conspiracy theory part three. <laughs> oh, there's the gonna be a part three. Yeah, well, since when is there a part three? By the way, guys, um, at the now. at the end of this <laughs> rambling, um, we're gonna go for a while oh, longer yes. and and just kind of talk about the new Star Wars movie. Star, Star Wars reviews. At review. this point, we've Spo- all spoiler seen it. alerts. Yeah. Um, I have a lot to, to be, say about this. It's going this. to be a Patreon only post. It is going to be a Patreon only post. Speaking so, of, all you have to do is give a dollar. And you sure and you yeah get that. we'll take it yeah or give two or five whatever seven thousand um, we'll take but, that uh, I was 20. thinking about it and the point is just uh, like a dollar so easy you know it's easy for me if you give me a dollar yeah and any amount of support for a podcast should come with like the the little benefits got to get something so it's come like on. um once in a while we'll record maybe some kind of a drunk tank where like after an episode we just keep hanging out and and for another 20 30 minutes that's what's happening now right right now yeah that's what we're doing oh i i don't know <laughs> i don't know what this is no this is this is that it's a, it's a drunk tank we're drinking drunk tank. and then we're gonna do the, the review tank. for the uh pa- many patreons <laughs> oh you you just said all of this no no i said we're going to do 15 minutes of star wars that will go on patreon right for the subscribers yeah but that's not what we're doing now I got a lot to talk about. I don't know if we can keep it down to 15 minutes, but well, whatever it is, I meant like at the end we'll hang up on this so that this file exists and then start. How's that different from that? Well, it's now versus like 20 minutes from now. (laughs) No, I just mean is the general uh, vibe of the episode overall. Like it's an un. I don't know what you're asking me. (laughs) I'm gonna move on. Can I tell a crazy story that I heard on a different podcast? Sure. (laughs) Wait, what? What, Johnny? Uh oh, Skype's. I think, Skype's I think we in lost trouble. him. I think we lost him. Did you guys see the uh, 99 can beer case they're selling in Quebec right now? No. <laughs> it's it's like a it's the size of a 12 case, but edit. it's long enough to fit 900 uh, 99 so uh, beer cans, and it's uh, PBR selling it, and it's it's like 10 12, 12 feet long or something crazy. PBR. It's this, it's this huge long case, just yeah. I don't know. I thought that was cool. Did you keep it in your backyard? Yeah, and pictures of it, like people had the they had it like hanging out of the bed of their truck to like, drive it home because it's just huh. a giant case of with a hundred beers in it. Yeah, they'll do it. They'll get her done. So uh, I I was coming in between various church gigs and I heard um, I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about um, doing psychedelics and going to church and how crazy that is. Wait, this was on your way there? Um, in between. Nice. On the way and on the way back. So, That's some perspective. Um, I like it. There's like you know some people who think Christianity is is just a bit, a mushroom cult, you know. And I that, mean, it like, is a cult. That the mushrooms cult of Jesus. were like one 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 of the keys to unlock the the ceremony and and, and feel it on a deeper level. Oh, you have to do mushrooms. Is like being on mushrooms. I mean, that's, yes, that's definitely a Santa, way to do it. Santa is a mushroom uh, bringer. <laughs> Right. I mean, that was a sentence grammatically. No, no. He, he, is, that, guys, is that a real thing? Like, if you trace back thing, the yeah. origin of Santa, you, you get, yeah, like, so in, mushroom in, delivery? You mean, like, truffles? Like, the or? milkman yeah. of, like, early so Christianity? In, in, yeah, in the Baltics and Scandinavia, moms. it took a while for Christianity to really get... <laughs> like, before the Livonian Crusade and stuff, there was a lot of pagan ah, cults up. and whatnot up there. We can get into that, that later. But, so, uh, they were talking they, about that, like like being in church and like and even just being stoned on like marijuana how like trippy the experience is well yeah it's going to be different um have you ever had a religious experience (laughs) how do you define that i just mean like like something where you were like it doesn't have to be like oh god just did this thing but something more like like where something like really weird something that you're not comfortable calling a coincidence that you're like totally you had yeah because i think everybody's had it it's like it was traveling through time so that's that's a whole other can of worms well actually if you ever found find yourself like hey i just traveled through time go to is it christmas.com and you can figure out like at least something (laughs) you can reground yourself it's like one data point (laughs) i do have a good story about that to share sometime though because i would like your take on so can i tell the story this guy told about that this is a about time travel no it was about like 
like <laughs> synchronicity, like a feeling of like, whoa, this is weird. He calls it. Yeah. He calls it. We we all have the moments where um, it feels like the universe is winking at us. Yep. Totally, okay, yeah, so this exactly. guy's story is he got really stoned and went to the movies. Um, <laughs> as as actually, every great story should start. Actually, if you just give start. me one second, I have his name right up on my phone. It's worth saying. He was amazing. Um, his name is Stephen Kotler. Oh, this was in that podcast. And, yeah. Yeah. And and he's like a journalist and an entrepreneur, and he's just extremely smart. Um, I'm going to check him out further, but... How much is he paying you to say all this? None. He just... It was an inspiring podcast, to be honest. Cool. Um so he said he was uh, really stoned and went to the movies and he saw Lost in Translation. Okay. And like that movie, apparently I haven't seen it, is about like, like just to your right is like this alternate universe. Like, and you just have to step to your right. Ah, shit. Something like that. Yeah. Right. So he sees this movie, whatever. He was really stoned. He gets out. He's like, man, I'm still really stoned. He lives in L.A. So he's he's walking home, but he's like, let me just take a nice long stoned walk home. Right. Yeah. yeah. And um, <clears throat> he gets to a street corner and. There's, like, this guy in, like, a, a Mexican, like, mariachi outfit standing at the corner. And he's kind of just like, what the, you know, like. And then as he gets up to the curb, so he's next to the guy, the guy looks at him and says, here, you need this more than I do. And it was a lighter with the three stooges on it. Huh. So he was just like, what? And he, like, looks at the lighter, puts it in his pocket, whatever, keeps walking. Um next thing he sees is i think it was oh this is what it was he passed the payphone like, wait is this in that movie or in this no guy's this life? is in this guy's real life okay he's talking about like look you have to be able to frame weird okay things that the like happen to you. Gotcha, yeah. you you can't assume like anything magical or mystical but yeah but we all have to admit we have these moments where yeah, we're yeah, like yeah. that was fucking a weird yeah that was some weird shit yeah so this he gets like a few blocks further and he passes a payphone and somebody dressed as spider-man is screaming on the payphone something like blah 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 and like banging the phone like having a fight Wait, with this somebody. was on halloween no this was on a <laughs> random night uh that's la for you <laughs> no apparently. if it was halloween this wouldn't be much of a story right <laughs> right so he goes a little farther and then he looks into a shop like a t-shirt shop or something and there's somebody dressed as chewbacca riding around on a bike inside the shop doing circles being like blue, 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 like just he was just high yeah like he wasn't on yeah, acid yeah. Or... no 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 okay and he, he just thought Math oh or... I, I i don't even remember if Jesus. i if i um if I preface this with when he got out of the movies and he started this journey, he did what they did in the movie, like step to the right, like, oh, I wonder if I'll be in an alternate universe right. now. Yeah. And then, like, he walks home all the time, and now this time it's like Spider Man's on a screaming phone call, right. a Mexican, like, with a mariachi, like, trumpet, like, hands him, like, a lighter with the three stooges on it and says, You need this more than I do. Yeah. And then there's a Chewbacca riding around a bike inside of a t shirt store. He's like, It felt <laughs> like the universe was winking at me. You know, like keep going, buddy. You you get it. I mean, I I guess that was the... his version of like like some synchronicity that like like you like just putting it up to complete coincidence just yeah. doesn't feel satisfying enough. No, I think that's just L.A. I'm that that's eh, you know that happens, right? I mean, it it definitely can happen, and yeah. that's the more likely explanation. Yeah. Just like we would talk about in the conspiracy episodes, yeah. like you have to go with the Occam's razor, like what's the most <laughs> likely thing? Yeah. But I I I've had that kind of thing happen a few times too and at the end of the day, I think it's a coincidence. See, but But I like to let my brain feel a little bit like can, like the Can universe I tell you my ti- Can me. I tell you my time travel story? Yeah, yeah, go Have for I it. told you my time travel story? I don't know. I don't nothing no memories coming to mind, so <laughs> The funny thing is, I already have Luke. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with time travel. <laughs> so I was I used to work at a bookstore in grad school and have I told you the story, Johnny? I don't know. Um uh, the time travel one? Maybe. <laughs> so I was work I, I used to work at this bookstore in uh, grad school and I was uh it was just like a pretty quiet like afternoon, you know, not that many customers. Uh but not totally empty. Whatever. Like totally average run of the mill day, right? And I was up, I remember, like, so specifically exactly how this played out, um, because it, it started out as such a normal mundane day, and the rest of the day was, but at a certain point in the afternoon, I was up at this, um, in the windows, we have these book display shelves, and we put, like, the, you know, bestsellers or whatever on the shelves in the display window, so that people walking by can see them, 
And so I was just up there dusting them, which is something that you do, you know, probably a... Uh, Probably a couple times a week working at a bookstore. It's just one of the checklist items yeah, to do. Just when it's not that busy, you go <laughs> unclog up and, the toilets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unclog the shitter. Wipe you know. down the kids' area of all the germs. Oh yeah, that was always a battle. Who's going to tackle the kids' <laughs> and area? And dust yeah. off the uh, weird time travel books. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> almost, in the haunted corner. The weird time travel. <laughs> yeah, it happened to have cobwebs and dark, just dark shadows everywhere. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but. Uh, so I was up there. Um, Johnny, you just rubbed your balls in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew that until you said it, Luke. That's true. Yeah. Way to narc. <laughs> <laughs> I had to adjust. Uh, you know, no, I, I thought adjust. it was it was. An oh, you got to adjust. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, so I'm in this, you know, uh, display window, like dusting off the shelves or whatever, and. You, are you familiar with Deja Vu? Have you ever experienced yeah, Deja yeah, Vu? Yeah, yeah, I get that all the time. Yeah, so I, I, I have as well. Like, I know that feeling very well. Um, and it's almost like a, a malfunction in the operating system for a second. Yes, correct. So That's exactly uh, what it is. I, I know that feeling, but what happened was I experienced something that was like that, but much more intense and much more visual. Mm -hmm. So what happened was, as I was dusting, I just sort of paused, and I was looking at the cash register where my, my friend and coworker was working, you know, she was just doing whatever behind the cash register. And as I was looking at it, just like randomly, I stopped like and looked for a second. And I had this memory of this older guy walking in, like it was a deja vu memory, like almost. Okay. Was, but it wasn't actually happening. In no, front of you? no. But I remember at the time, being you remember like, being at that window and seeing it? No, I remember it, it, it was that like that feeling. Yeah, it was weird because it wasn't deja vu because it wasn't actually happening. Yeah. But it was like in my mind. Like, I Is could... it sort of like how a smell can trigger a memory in that like kind of weird, like it's like you just experienced it again, but well, you it, didn't see it? Well, so here's the weird thing. Like I, it was very like a very clear memory more so like an actual memory of this old guy walking, walking in walking right up to the cash register, like not really looking around the store at all, like just walking in the store, walking straight to the cash register and saying, hi, my friend says, can I help you? He says, yeah, hi, I'd like to buy a $50 gift card, please. And she says, oh, This yeah. was all the detail of your memory? Yep. And she says, she says, yeah, sure. Fills it out, hands it to him. He pays with credit card. He, uh, you know, signs the uh, slip or whatever, leaves. And then that's it. That's all I remembered. And I was like, that's weird. Why am I remembering this now? I swear to God. Where were you in that memory, though? I, I, it's just a memory of me like watching it from there, from the book stand, like the. Uh, the and when you show. luck into your actual memory. No, 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 room. Luke. This is where it gets weird, and I swear, I swear to you, this is exactly what happened. About five minutes later, I'm still on that shelf dusting because it's like this big display shelf. Uh -huh. An old guy walks in, and this is when the deja vu kicked in. Walks up to the register, says. She says, hi, how can I you help can you? You can hear, like, yep. the register from where you yep. are? Yeah, he says, I'd like to buy a $50 gift card, please. Everything plays out. He walks out, and she just goes about her business. And I just What stopped. was his name? I don't know. You didn't check the fucking name? No, I had to I had to dust the bookshelves. Fuck, you're right. I should have done that. No. What if it was Nikolai Tesla? Dude, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> But, dude, that's the uh, weird part, cards. is I was so blown away. Because, <laughs> yeah, you know, he's Tesla, so he has to stop into a random bookstore <laughs> and buy a gift card. Me. But, dude, I was so blown away, I didn't even think to <laughs> I didn't even think to check the receipt. You know what I mean? I was like, what the fuck was that? And then you probably I, just thought, like... I was, like, shell-shocked uh, the rest of the day. Let me uh, keep an eye on maybe I'm having a stroke kind of... Well, eye. that was my first instinct, because I'm like, fuck, I might need to take a night off from drinking or something, because that was weird. Then your second thought was like, no, that's crazy, I shouldn't do that. Well, no, I kept <laughs> drinking, obviously, but... there's Joe, there's two theories of deja vu that I like, because I've tried to figure out what it yeah, is. But that was different from the, every other deja vu, because I it saw... Was it, right. it, it, like, it was reverse deja vu. It was reverse deja vu. And it's, it happened... That's never happened to me since. you got the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's never happened to me since, and it was very Kurt Vonnegut-y, where it was like, oh yeah, of course everything's happened, like, and you travel through time, and sometimes that hiccups, and you can... It, it could have been that you saw a hiccup, like a gravitational that, wave That's hiccup. what I mean, yeah. yeah. That, like, that's the most And you didn't actually thing. even see it with your vision, but you saw it in, like, your mind's eye. Yeah, as... exactly. And I was just like, well, fuck. Look, part okay. of me wants to believe that. Another part of me doesn't Dude. trust the fuck the fucking thing you said. You know, Dude, like... that's, that, that's, and that's totally reasonable. I'm telling you, that's the only time it happened, and it was so clear to me at the time. I was like, how do I do this again? Because that was crazy, and I have never come close to experiencing anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny, what were the two theories of uh, deja vu? Oh, yeah. So there's two ideas that I like. One, 
is that it, it's it's timelines like bifurcating or getting cut off. You know, it's like a moment that it just it's a, like a, a point for timelines, and that's why you you get that hiccup. Oh, because you're a on couple... a different timeline. Oh, like well, like no, you no. were on a, a a track, and then it sort of like shifted a little bit, and you got like a weird like like sense of like something possibilities yeah. possibilities merging, or it's like a branching point, like uh-huh. you know. Or the other theory, which makes more sense. Subway system of time. Well, that gets into like multiverses too, right? You know, fuck. Should totally have a multiverse episode. But we, uh, but the other theory, which makes a lot more sense, is that it has to do with your perception, like your perceptive uh, senses and your cognitive senses, and it's like a cognitive hiccup. That's the one that I obviously buy more to to be to process it, and you're like, whoa. Well, that just happened already, but it's you just. Well, I think that's, I think that's the one I understand more. Also, I can wrap my that's head the around. one that that's most reasonable, it. right? I mean, uh, it's the most put, reasonable for what I know. Alter the brain with like drugs of some kind or some kind of physical damage, yeah. and you start to see malfunctions, and that's just a malfunction, I think. You know, I recommend Martian Time Slip by Philip K. Dick. Oh, I tried uh, reading that; I couldn't get into it. Is weird. His in the book, according to the in, in that universe, people with Down syndrome apparently and are just perceiving the universe at a different speed. Oh thing. wait, I'm thinking of Ray Bradbury, the Mar- Martian Chronicles. Oh, yeah, that's a different one. Never mind. Oh, so but, I mean, of course, because that know, sounds way weirder and cooler. <laughs> the, any of those like more out there theories, I like to keep that open mind of like, yeah, it's kind of fun to think anything's possible. But at the end of the day, I, I always fall on the on the more skeptical side of like, hey, I think, well, I think probably. It's... Even though we can't explain something fully, the most likely explanation is this. You well, know? I think it's it's good to be skeptical, but it's also good to be speculative. And yeah, because that's creativity. And that's but that's sort of how you get to different points, right? Like, I mean, you can go back in history and say a lot of things about you know reality, and I can come to you and say, oh no, this is actually gravity or something. And for a lot of history, you might be like. What are you talking about, man? Yeah. You know, like, we haven't figured out, like, the formulas that lead to those formulas. Yeah, totally. And it's like, well, yeah, you you shouldn't cement yourself in in either one thought of, like, oh, yeah, it must be this crazy thing that we don't quite understand yet, or it might might, must just work within the framework that we already have, too. A lot of science being built on those singular individuals who are willing to challenge the system of like what the what the commonly held yeah. belief was, and and, and, so, and some of it does make sense. Within sometimes the utterly fail. Yeah, totally. As, there are plenty of people who live in their parents' basement who are like, you know, they think they've solved the grand unified theory to merge gravity with quantum mechanics, and it's like they'll email their 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 shit to like real physics professors at, at colleges who have jobs because they actually like do it and. You know, these guys say, like, yeah, those are all crackpot theories. Like, if you get into the details, the math doesn't work. It's like they know a little bit of math, but not enough to actually be on the frontier of this, you know? Or, like, string theory. Yeah, things, that's just you know? what they would say, though. They don't want their jobs well, so taken. Well, so there's a little bit of a conspiratorial mind to that, too, <laughs> yeah. So, deja vu. That's a whole episode, too. But Sometimes I'll I think even, we just did it. I'll even get it where um, I'm watching a TV show, and I get this like like perma deja vu where i'm like like as the thing's happening i feel like i'm i've already seen it like it's like um, yeah well that is deja vu it's like i get like a little mirror and i can look around the corner of time just a little bit you know yeah because you get this sense of like oh i know what's gonna happen next yeah yeah you're like how do i know what's gonna happen next? see so that's like what happened to me in the bookstore except i actually like i knew what the old guy was gonna say as he walked in i was like oh he's gonna go up to the counter and ask for a 50 dollar gift card because I, I remember him doing it. Like it's I was possible just happened, you were you just know. like on the verge of passing out from like getting <laughs> what, up whatever too chemicals or I was in. like wiping yeah, down that's the shelves. Like, what, what was the you spray know? you were using? Ah, uh, uh, I don't know. It was grad school, man. There were a <laughs> lot of sprays. You don't worry about that kind of no, thing. No, yeah, I, I just needed my paycheck for my potato chip bag lunch. You I know? mean, think back to like the fifties, <laughs> like what pe- people were just like smoking cigarettes all day, like all around Every their day, kids, yeah. like. Nothing mattered, you know. Yeah. Like Johnny, you were saying, like, like, like they didn't really pay attention to kids so much, you know. Like kids just sort of had their, had their space, and unless you were like punching your sister in the face, like, yeah, then like well, that's what my parents say because when we were kids, I mean, they let us run around, but they also, oh, you have to be here then, you have to check in, blah blah blah. And my parents say now they're like, 
Oh, yeah. Our parents didn't even know we were alive. We would just go out for the day and, you know, eventually hopefully come, come back. come back at dinner time. Yeah. And they, yeah, were, totally. and they were social workers. <laughs> you knew yeah, when well, dinner was, right? Our grandparents were social workers who were considered good parents. <laughs> yeah. But they were. Yeah. There is a certain amount of independence you have to give a kid so that it, it, it can just kind of... I like how you refer to the kid as it, and you also broke my uh, my <laughs> my lighter beer can opener. Hey. Have you ever have you ever taken mushrooms, Luke? <laughs> no. Really? Wow, you, you broke the shit out of this thing. It's definitely something I man. want to do, though. Although sometimes I worry that. Um, Didn't you offer him once to do mushrooms on? Sometimes a I worry that I already have like pretty trippy experiences, just like I'm good in normal day yeah. life, like. Like, cause like I'll, I'll, I'll purposely try top. and do things like that where you get yeah. to a point where your whole body feels like light or something. Like if you're meditating or you say, drink like 30 beers. Well, no, usually it doesn't feel like light. It feels like bags of water. <laughs> I just <laughs> Each covered. Each limb is like a bag of water. I'm just covered just like, in and on bags of water. <laughs> yeah. And you're at the beach. <laughs> you can't get up. Apparently, apparently, it's hard to get drunk on psychedelics because your brain is running at such a fucked up RPM, anyways, that you don't really notice your alcohol impairment because you're, be so, you're so yeah. off otherwise. But uh, yeah, you should go somewhere thing, where you should go somewhere it's legal and take us because the cool thing about mushrooms is it's natural, so you can take a small micro dose where you just it, they where, say where you feel like you're really. Uh, there's some countries. Amsterdam, I mean, right? Nice. I think so. Yeah, I think there's some places in Europe where they're cool. With. Um, I know a lot of people go to like South America and and um, will. Wait, wait, you know a lot of people who go to South America? I said I know a lot Name of people one. will go to. Oh, okay. South America. I was like, I want to know these to various cats you're countries out where with. it's where like they still do like the ayahuasca stuff, ayahuasca rituals and stuff. Yeah. Um, in fact, that shit a CNN, scares me. There's a CNN. Um, there's a difference between like you want to that. You want to dance and like listen to music in a field on some mushrooms, or do you want to like have to see God? Like you're gonna, whether you he's real both? or not, you're meeting yeah. him. It's like, oh geez, that's a whole right. thing. I'm in but, deep. So almost like what I would say about like the whole psychedelic thing is that it almost like fast forwards you to a a religious experience, you know. And so let's say Close you're enough. in church and they're saying, you know, oh, yeah, that's Lamb of God, about. you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you know, mm, God like, lamb. and like, and like, you're just on mushrooms too. Like you would probably, I mean, I play like, you know, Messiah, you know? Yeah. So the text from that is from the Bible and yeah. you just look up some of these Bible verses and I do the steel manning thing. <clears throat> that's like, instead of straw manning the Bible and making fun of like all the various ways that it's stupid, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, like, read it and try to find the deeper, like, religious I like how, meaning. I like how Luke just lost all and any of our religious Yeah, tell us how you really feel. I hope I'm not. <laughs> like, the point is I'm saying there's a lot of amazing things in there, too. Yeah. Um, and I love the idea of the religious experience in general. Yeah. Like, I'm definitely not anti-religion. Maybe I used to be when I was younger, but, like, yeah, yeah. I've kind of softened well, up you on bounce Well, ar- you bounce around, right, between sort of extremes in that sense i love rituals i yeah. love the idea of rituals yeah um but same, like, same thing with a lot of the saying. other things like tradition community like a lot of that is really good shit yeah and it, it's it's, maybe it's very crucial to the workings of humans to like have these um rituals of, of christmas and family and well, it's also more more fun more dining yeah. and overeating and, yeah. and drinking and the various things we do yeah there's a reason why it's been done for all of human history in terms of like since we decided oh yeah let's like farm and build chairs but then of course like anything good you get a lot of what they call woo woo um creeping in woo woo is just like woo woo -woo is what the skeptical community calls like oh i got um, you yeah you know when people are like hey man i i did an ayahuasca trip and i talked to spirits and they came in my body i'm like well, you had that experience, you know? and then I realized, no, no, they think that happened, you know? Yeah, but you don't know that they also didn't do it. Well, so one of the point is, one of the points is, um, if you're on psychedelics and you have an experience, you don't have to think it happened in so much as, like, it happened from an outside perspective watching you, you were just wriggling on the floor like a swamp pig, you know? A swamp pig. Do you, yeah. do you know? That's an image. Yeah, I like But in your mind, you were meeting God, and you were, you were, you were... I like how the one version is, in your mind, you were meeting God, but to everybody else, you were just a writhing swamp pig. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, but like, but if you come back from that and yeah. you think, no, I, I, I understand. What okay, you're I'm coming back to the uh, objective reality world where science is real and blah blah blah. But I'm going to take that subjective experience I had, yeah, and let it inform my life in these other dimensions. That's why I always come back yeah, to yeah. this model of the I mind as like um, they have different rooms, and one room is like a religious room. And if you extinguish that room and you never light a fire in that room, then it, it kind of changes you in a way not necessarily for the better. Yeah. So it's it's important to find like rituals, like yeah. Christmas yeah, is a ritual. Yeah, it doesn't it, have to be Christmas, of course. But whether it's like to re- light a fire in that religion in, that in religion the sense room. of like organized religion or spirituality or like or fam- something personal or family, family and community tradition, it, it all ties together. It's an energy ways. that that yeah. you have to like. It's a vibe, yeah. Get that room, live in that room sometime so yeah. that the, there's, there's a balance. In well, it's part of being thing. human. Yeah, and it's probably yeah. like um, a, a deep part that when ignored, um, it isn't optimal, you know? Well, maybe. I mean, I, I don't. Maybe that's for, just a theory. I but, don't know. Yeah, maybe for an individual, any given individual, it's it, it could be fine. But when you think of all of humanity. Right. For me, I think it's it's That's something I have to definitely do because if I go too far down the the um, rabbit hole of just like all logic, just like our logo is like a computer hard drive on one side yeah. and just like a fun squishy swirly yeah. thing on the other side. Yeah, I forget who has the beer and who has the books. The I... beer goes to the squishy swirly. It does. Side. Yeah. And Does the books okay. go to feed the computer, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. But there's a reason. Isn't That's that the only re- way that makes sense? No, I think I might, because I, I thought I did it opposite because it was funny. But I, I you might be right. I, I don't remember. No, the beer's on the left side, and no, the, the books are on, on the right, the right. Side. Oh, it is? I promise, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. The beer... No, I'm thinking of it from the brain's point of view. Whoa, whoa, whoa that's hilarious. <laughs> I, I just realized that. <laughs> Joe just made himself the brain in our logo right there. So when you say brain left, you mean stage... Brain left. Brain <laughs> exactly. Stage left. I meant brain stage you left. Ever, you ever meet like somebody who like maybe they That's did right. a little bit of acting in high school and a little bit in college, something like that, and, and they'll purposely bit. say like um, house right or stage left and and just to well, like it, name well, drop the, the term. Just wait, to be, in like, like their daily life? Well, I, I just mean like name dropping in general where people will drop something and it's just like they're trying to get the credit for like what it shows about them, but at the same time... They get the credit for being humble by not saying it. I would be pretty outraged if I oh, asked I somebody, like, at... do I go left or right? And they said stage left. I'd be like, great, we're about to die and crash. <laughs> Thank you. Or starboard, you know. Yeah, starboard forward. Like in the music like, the world, fuck? if somebody Hardcore. slips yeah. in where they went to school or who they studied with, it's a really funny thing because they'll be like, yeah, you know, I mean, I had a really great time when I was a freshman at Juilliard. You know, and it's like. What was the last thing you said? You trailed yeah. off, and like I'll make them say it again, you know, because yeah. they were trying to not say like, see how many like, times. Oh, you can I get say credit Julie for Art. saying I went to this good school? But they're trying to get the credit, but also like pretend like it just came out naturally. Yeah. But it was like actually artificial, like you could smell it on them, you know? Yeah. Like uh, in Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry gets pissed off because he donates a hospital wing. And it, it says, donated by Larry David, and there's a thank you party, and people are saying, oh, how generous of you, blah, blah, blah. But then he finds out that Ted Danson also donated a hospital wing, but he donated it anonymously. And it says, uh, donated by anonymous. Yet everyone at the party knows that Ted Danson is anonymous, and he's giving these, like, subtle, like, really yeah. asshole, like, well, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And, like, still getting all the credit right. and even more credit because he didn't need to have his name attached but to it. But that's what it's about. That's that's what it's really pointing to, that idea of, like, oh, of course you did it for, you know, the recognition. Especially if you, nobody knows in this case. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. It turns out. But uh, people do, I mean, people do that as well. But I, I guess that just depends on, like, what circles you're trying to impress then, right? Like, are you trying to impress the yeah, public sphere? Or it's, just... it's a self-awareness thing, yeah, too, because, involved. like, if you were self-aware, you would notice it that what you're doing yeah and you would notice that like i'm noticing it too and like that's why i love to just sort of like very subtly fuck with people when they do that like i remember one time when i was young in a youth orchestra i was still in high school and i got to the first rehearsal i had just gotten into it and um to the other trumpet player i was like hey what's up like i'm luke how's it going and yeah i'm this person and uh He's like, where do you go to school? I was like, oh, I'm, I live on Long Island. I'm still in high school. And he was like, uh, I was like, where do you go to school? He's like, Juilliard. And I was like, oh, 
Wh- where's that? Is that upstate? Or, you know, like, I just to fuck with him. Like, I, yeah. I, I wanted him to, like, have to, like, tell me, no, no, I go to the famous music school in Lincoln yeah. Center called yeah. Juilliard. I was like, yeah. oh, I've heard of that, you know, yeah. like, just, because, like. Oh, that's a music school? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. You know that backfire, Luke, and he just walked away being like, fucking rube. <laughs> Like he, <laughs> yeah, he probably walked away like, what an idiot. <laughs> what an you know asshole. And so, so did glad. I, right? I walked away thinking, what a tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you both walked hey, away with similar... Guys, you guys could both be wrong or you could both be right. Isn't that crazy? Right? Uh, I mean... Right and wrong. I mean, he's a right perfectly wrong, nice person, too. It's right, just like, you right, know, like some people will do that and then like when you get yeah. to know them, it's like they're not like that at all either, you know? Right, but it's it's something to do. I mean, if you're able to do it, why not, you know? Yeah. Um, How many mushrooms do you have to take to think reindeer are flying? I, uh, I wanted to ask that question before, but we moved on from the topic. I so would, I just want to throw it out there. Now, question, I would say, are you seeing real reindeer and you just have to hallucinate the flying? I would say regardless. Or are you hallucinating everything? Yeah, I would say regardless, at least some. Some, yeah. At least. How much do you have to take for people to still talk about the story like a thousand years later? What? Oh, later. I see what Johnny's getting <laughs> He's trying to like concoct how the story of like Santa came. To oh, because be. he used to give mushrooms. Can we can we do a little quick riff on Santa? Yeah, why not? Santa, like, uh, what father is, what person, are Santa's please. colors. So, what Johnny, can you follow through? What 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 is? Give us your Santa mushroom theory. I guess. All right. So in, Scan- <laughs> in Scandinavia, their, their houses would get snowed in regularly, so they'd have access hatches through like by the chimney, so you could get, you didn't have to hack out. Ice blocks through your front door. I never know how much of this Johnny's making up versus <laughs> no, just is... like, is it just colorful storytelling or did he no, read a book is... on yeah, it? He's just riffing. He's like, well, this, this is probably what they do in Sweden. He is right. <laughs> this was this is this is a real thing. You have like a hatch. No, this is for a Swedish fan. <laughs> Our one Swedish fan. Yeah. Now this is just this going is, in my yeah. memory as fact. I wonder how many facts from fact. like. Our childhood Johnny and are you in tell, there as like tell, structural you, information, but like it was just you storytelling. And you tell it like a holy oh, Christmas they're party. All, they're, they're mostly true. You just believe the fake news of the internet when you try to fact check them. That's real. All right, so know? this is this is but, a factually accurate um, Santa mushroom theory. Wait, we can get our Swedish it's, it's a, friends it's, to. It's cross, true that this is this. a true. theory, yeah. and I'm not making it up. If our Swedish know, listeners, okay, listener so give us give us the theory as it stands. You can fact check us on this. So what are the colors? What Wait, are, are you talking about Sweden? Hi, hi Sweden. Hi, guys. I yeah. like you. Um, yeah, me too. What, what, are the, what are the colors that Santa wears? Red and white. Red and white. Psilocybin mushrooms are red caps with white dots. Um, he brings Whoa. gifts and drops gifts down. <laughs> in an area Super of, Mario wears Wait, so red the, and white, the too. Sa- the Santa hat is, is a red thing with a white cap. Right. Damn. All right, so what was yeah. the thing with the presents you yeah. said? So, um... Look so paganism was trying to be stamped out by the church because, you know, competing, whatever. They, it took them a while to get all the way up north, though. Um, so they, you know, there were areas where they would hide out, like practice their religion secretly. So they would have somebody uh, sneak or a shaman get mushrooms and then sneakily drop them off for your solstice festival. With, like, reindeers, like, like, pulling them through the woods? Well, that's the thing about reindeer. You're not going to believe this either, but reindeer can eat psilocybin and mushrooms, and they don't get high from it. But they just it, get they, sustenance? Yeah, they just eat Damn. the mushroom. They don't trip, but they will piss out active psilocybin. So if you drink their piss, mm. you'll trip. And that's true for humans, but less so. You, you'll pee some out. So shamans back in the you'll day... You'll also would, throw some up, I think. They, they'd get reindeer <laughs> piss and drink it and trip out and be like, here, drink my piss. And like you drink this dude's piss and be like, I'm tripping out. This dude's got some magic piss. Like It was a, it was a whole thing. <laughs> Santa has but, magic piss? No, that that's the reindeer, the connection, because oh. the reindeer can eat it. And, well, they said the we used to do that with cow shit, too, it. right? Like, cows would eat mushrooms, and then humans would follow cows and, like, grow things from that. and like. Yeah, yeah exactly. Is that kind of thing. Maybe but, there was, like, uh, a symbiotic, like, mushroom relationship with but, human but, and consciousness. Yeah. You would have someone maybe riding a reindeer. <laughs> riding <around laughs> Wait, but Santa doesn't mushroom. ride the reindeer. You, you would have to deliver the mushrooms in secret at night, because the church wasn't thrilled about pagan activities and probably tried to stamp them out so that's why you'd have to sneak around in a sleigh with, with a big bag full of sneaking and pe- dro- just dropping them down people's houses and bouncing. sounds like conspiracy part three so they could have their private little festival i'm just saying it, 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 there's some no i mean there's point. something there i mean something there i well, again this is this is when <laughs> right now we're, we're letting our brain go into the 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 beer Joe side of our logo the wishy-washy side um, Joe believes me about 40% right now. 
Uh, wow. Johnny, I, you, I, your genie senses are on because be, that's exactly how I'll, I'll be honest, I Johnny. You. I believe you like 60%. Ah. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, you you haven't been dealing with the genie as long as I have. I don't believe anything. Like, so, like, like 60% <laughs> right. is high. For no, that's Luke. what I mean. That's good. That's that's why I'm. Yeah. Like, I'm if somebody, 80% like. 60% sure I'm here right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. What was it? Last night, um, I was in my room of my current house and I was, like, just, like, in a screen and so like my brain started telling me like i'm in my childhood room why it just sort of like flashed before me and like because there was like no lighting and then my brain was sort of tricked for a second oh yeah like, that's like when you wake up in the night and it's dark and you're like which way am i facing yeah. the wall or when you wake up in a hotel a lot of people have that experience of not knowing where you are in yeah. the morning you're like what room or because you didn't am connect I in? Yeah. the memories of showing right. up there and falling asleep yeah let's say you got there late or your parents like brought you in while you were sleepy yeah. you it's almost like um when you brown out with alcohol you barely form the memories yeah, and then yeah. like you wake up in the morning you're like huh, where am i like yeah. you know they're like scotch tape with too much lint on them they, and it doesn't quite stick yeah the memories tr- are a little bit yeah. like you put them on the fridge yeah. to see in the morning and they yeah like fell down yeah. it's like it's there but it's it's slipping is that the, guys- is that the mushroom uh theory or are there any more uh funny connections <laughs> No, I'm sure there's more, but you, you just reminded me of something. When you when you are laying there, and, and like, have you ever moved your bed to a different part of the room, mm-hmm. and you have that happen where you 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 get up and you're like, oh man, I didn't expect the wall to be yeah. where it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But you ever do that and you lay down, being like, okay, I moved the bed, and then try to close your eyes and convince yourself the bed's in the other spot yep. still. I think and that's a healthy you, thing to do. It's it's one then, of the things then, that gives you flexibility. And then open your eyes and then shock yourself and be like, oh fuck, I, re- I was totally sure it was over there. I, yeah. I've done that before. You can do that with your limbs. You can tell yourself that you don't have a hand, and you can pay like really close attention to the raw sensation of what having a hand is like. And one of the things you realize is that you have the nerve ending feelings Wait, of having what? a hand. What are you talking about? I'm saying if you're sitting there and you start meditating and you close your eyes, yeah, you can hold out one of your hands yeah and then you can try to pay close attention to what it feels like to have a hand ah shit just do it with me i'll do it real quick well, have you not I'm taken not mushrooms that. luke johnny i'm gonna i'm gonna hand I'm gonna awareness take like a, i'm gonna take like a minute to freak out um you guys and the listeners uh, and it might not work but i'm not but meditating just yet. try it no try i just it. mean okay. like hold out your hand all right i'll hold out my hand and then try to like the same way you would focus on like you know, your boss talking to you, telling Wait, you, like, a complicated direction. Where's the lightsaber? How do I grab that? No, no, it, you have to have an empty hand. Ah, shit. And you sort of start to feel that, like, like pay close attention, and you just feel a bunch of tingling in your hand. You know, it's not like um, you don't feel everywhere on your hand. You feel, like, these pulsating points of feeling. Oh, it's the force. Right? Do you feel totally that, like, force, pulsating yeah. Yeah. different points? <laughs> And, like, you settle into that, like, okay. And then you close your eyes, and you're just, like, feeling these points on your hand. And then you realize that your mind has an image of your hand as part of its mapping of your body. Yeah. So you try to, like... Bum, 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 bum. You, like, drag that image into the recycle bin of your, like, files. Don't fully delete it. That's probably scary. But, like, you just pretend to yourself that, like... um, the shape of my hand is actually like, you know, a hook or something. And like, I feel the field around the hook, like change the shape. And you'll realize that the only reason you feel like you have a hand is because of the image mapping. You I just do imagine you with body. a hook hand. Well, it feels like that. Like, I, can I get a ball on a chain, like a flail? It's just, it's People like, are... it's like what you said with the bed, Johnny, you're tricking your brain oh, into okay. something, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's perception. Yeah. Because what Except you I feel as your body is actually not what's really going on most of the time. Do you know what I feel? And I think psychedelics just, like, slam you into that other place. Nah, in... you, that's not what, not not totally. You should you should try some. You've, you've thought about that mindset enough that I think if you tried them, you do fine. It probably yeah, did a, lo- a low dose. But, of course, I urge you to go somewhere where it's legal so you feel safe and comfortable and, yeah. obviously, I'm not advocating for any sort of criminal behavior. Of course not. But, uh, we would never do that. But, but it is a, yeah. a thing that it's like hacking. It's when humans hack biology, like, you know, getting to eat tasty food instead of food we need. Like, we kind of just hack our current system. Psychedelics is definitely one of those hacks. Uh, or like sex for pleasure instead of making more yeah, people. It's, it's, like it's we've hacking just, we've the operating system. Hack a, yeah, yeah. So 
But I, w- I would say, like, like... you put so much thought into your hand. Um, but seriously, like, yeah, that's a trippy thing. You should try it on some mushrooms, bro. Bro. And then yeah, have a I podcast. Mean, you should record it. And then we can analyze that. I don't know about out. that. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, Joe Rogan and Duncan Trussell did a podcast together on acid. Oh, man. Really? Yeah, it's, epi- it's so, like episode 900 and something. Uh, I watched it before I knew that. And then, like, four episodes later, I think Rogan, like... Uh, just in passing, it, he probably didn't even mean to. He just said, like, oh, by, yeah, me, we were totally on acid for that podcast. Really? Yeah. Oh, so it wasn't like, oh, we're doing acid this episode. No. And I think he didn't even he mean to. He just did to. a little bit of acid, yeah. No, oh, we got um, a new follower during our recording. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Um, so if you're still listening to us, thank you. Uh, the, the thing that helps us out most is just, like... Money. Subscribing. No. Actually, no. Cold hard cash, just, please. Just, Comments. Su- just listening, subscribing... Social security and, number. And sharing. Things... Like, when somebody shares a podcast with me that's a friend, I listen to it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Please, uh, if, if you if, know somebody like, who you think would like any of this, share it with it them. It helps, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's genuinely fun for us to uh, chill out and Skype with Johnny and talk, and the more downloads we get and if you can help us out on patreon we can uh, eventually upgrade equipment we can put more time into it all yeah. good things we we have a, a tier system now too so you should check that out yeah any donation on patreon will get you access to the after hours yes any things donation get weird in the after hours things are uh, gonna get a little slippery we usually switch to miller high life or something yeah. like that yeah it's and fun you should try it out you, too. you guys do i i don't yeah, Johnny lives Whoa, in, like, uh, beer heaven. Yeah, um, you, he you know, Carolina. Me. He has two taps yeah. in his house. He does have a kegerator. Right, so... I got a third now. <laughs> he oh got a third. God. So the worst that ever happens yeah. for Johnny is he has to switch to his homebrew tapped beer. <laughs> That's not a bad worse that can happen. <laughs> That's, like, yeah. a pretty equal best. Yeah. Yeah, I got a couple Belgian beers on right now. So for, for merely $1 yeah. per episode on Patreon. It's nothing. Patreon.com slash Thunk Tank Podcast, right? Yeah, that sounds great. Um, um, whatever. We will post occasionally, not necessarily every week, but, but well, as they frequently don't have to as give we a, can. A dollar per episode. If they give us one dollar ever, they get all our Well, the way Patreon works stuff. is it's a per creation service. Right. So you sign up for an amount for every publish that yeah. gets made. You can't just give them a one time, give us a one time dollar. Well, as of now, I, I, I haven't like that figured too. that out. No, um, Patreon it, it, exists it's set on right either now, a like, monthly or a per episode. Thing. Yeah, I think it's set right okay. now per creation. So it would be like per podcast yeah. that we publish. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Which would be four dollars a month if we if we're sticking to a, a weekly schedule. Yeah, I mean, which can, is what we're trying to do. Yeah, I think you can also like set a limit, right? Like, yeah, you can set a limit so it's like, but no more than this. Right, like no more than uh, f- four dollars a month. I mean, when you look around the Patreon world, you see mostly, and this is the inspiring thing, for most like successful Patreons the highest number of donors is in that one dollar or two dollar area you know yeah that's fine that's great and, i like and, it and then like you of course you always get a few whatever like hundred dollars yeah. we're ones. gonna there's there's further tiers you can look into. um so it's it's like a cool way to sort of make it costs money to like host a podcast like on a place where you can download it yeah so um we have we have operating costs. I our, mean, our they're, they're still mostly be beer, but just to meet the operating costs. Yeah. For hosting it, and then from there we can upgrade microphones for and get, Joe and, and I. And get really weird. And and help our audio out, and then from there, if you guys help us by sharing and all this stuff, like you don't have to just listen to the three of us boring fuckers. We'll be talking to like smart people yeah. and like bouncing ideas off like people in like diff- all different. That's fields. why we're moderately smart because we know so many That's actually smart. The people. only reason I'm smart, I, I thought about this yeah. on the way here, is th- like a- any knowledge I have, I not any, but a lot of it comes <laughs> from um, right. not podcasts where people just rant and kind of, but it's it's that environment, but talking to somebody really qualified. Because yeah. I think there's a when you combine the energy like we have now of just hanging out and riffing ideas, but you also have somebody that's an expert in some kind of way. Yeah. You get the expert information, but in a really chilled out way. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's there's, why Rogan's podcast balance. is so successful. Whether he has a physicist on, or whether he's talking to a comedian, or whether he's talking to you know 
um, somebody who's in the the political sphere, whatever it is. Yeah, Santa shroom theorists. He's almost requiring them to settle into the vibe of podcast world and be real yeah. and just kind of like give us your expertise, you know. I can I add something? Yeah. That I want I yeah. want from these people that may or may not be listening. I, I would like some feedback. If people could comment, tell us something you do and don't like about what we're doing. Yeah. And we're, we'll we're, uh, um, either ignore it. We're them learning. Or not. We have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. Johnny, you just opened up a whole can of YouTube uh, comment orbs, but I'm down for that. No, I mean uh, yeah, but we this got is how it works. Right yeah. Uh, yeah. We have no idea what we're doing. Um, but but uh, already like if Fuck if. It. We did about 10 episodes before we started publishing. Yeah, just to, at least. At least, yeah. Some of them I didn't even hit record on, for example. <laughs> um, yeah. So you can imagine those were more like where we would be drunk already and then decide to try and make a podcast. There were some where we were like, okay, this is going to be the first episode. And then by the time we hit record, we were just yeah, smashed. well, we would forget to do a podcast, and yeah. then we'd be like, oh, we were supposed to podcast. Yeah. Like, it was at that level. <laughs> and then we sort of upgraded to trying slightly. a little harder, but we sort of just kind of learned, like, what's just complete, utter nonsense. Yeah. And then by the time we we're got to episode one here... We're trying to say that we're professionals, here, so you should support us. We tried to... Uh, I don't think anybody cares about how we decided we should start a podcast. No. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a big part of, like, what the vibe is, though. Uh, we have no idea what we're doing, so, like... Yeah. Uh, yes, don't don't yeah. tell them that. I see. We're we've been doing this they for know. many many a beta, it. Luke. I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah. Uh, if it's not obvious by now, then thank you for sticking around. I, so, I just uh, thought of a would you rather, guys. You want you want. So let's would let's you look rather? at the time. Um, I think we have time. All right. Well, obviously something uh, went, something went awry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Skype gave us a little trouble. Hung up. Uh. Madness ensued as Johnny talked to himself for another five minutes. Joe talked to the microphone by himself. You don't want to hear that recording. It's there, going there, right there in the vault. Some, there were some lonely spots um, there for, for a while. Yeah, it was pretty I awesome. was peeing blood for 20 minutes. Oh, God. You had to go there. Anyway, so uh, we it got was, cut. Messy. We it were in the messy. middle of a would you rather and got cut short. Uh, technical difficulties. Technical they difficulties. The Would You Rather had something to do with Santa and Jesus, but um, we never got. We'll see if that gets recycled. Time. We don't even know what the rules were yet. Um, but, anywho, thanks for tuning in to our post-Christmas hangover episode. That's Is apparent, that what we're calling? That's apparently it? what it turned out. So um, uh, yeah, it, it was a kind of a weird it. one. Uh, it please was a great be one. on the lookout for. 2017 year in review episode. That will be next. Uh, I guess we're gonna. Record that tomorrow morning. <laughs> in like t- less than in 12, less than 12 hours. hours. But yes, folks, we're having beer in the morning. We, Get we, over it. It's vacation. We are so dedicated that we came back in studio tonight drinking to record this message to explain what happened. And we'll be back tomorrow morning to bring you more glorious content. Thanks for listening. Like, share, subscribe. Is that yeah. how you do it, Joe? Like, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much. Yeah. Peace. I'll see you tomorrow. You need a necker or not?